Did you know that goat's milk has been used to make goat cheese for thousands of years? And with good reason. Do you eat dairy products from sheep or goat milk, such as yogurt or cheese? If not, let me show you why I think you should. I'm travelling three hours to visit an amazing Australian goat and sheep farm. We are just amazed on the benefits and the nutritional values and the disease protective properties of goat's milk. Our vision is to be sustainable, so to produce food sustainably. And I'm not just talking about producing the cheese in a sustainable way, but growing the grass and managing the soil and being responsible for the water uh, and, the, and the environment. Meredith Dairy is a great example of sustainable and responsible farming. For power, they use renewable energy from all these solar panels. To eliminate gas consumption, they heat water using old wood chips in this wood fire boiler. They also replenish the soil nutrients and have planted thousands of trees. This side of the road was um, a gravel pit. So what we did is we collected seed from the plants that grew in this little patch here, which was remnant, and we grew all these trees from seed and planted them. I just want to show you this, these native grasses. I thought, right, this has got to be protected so that it can regenerate. This grass is known as kangaroo grass. It's a type of wheat used by Australian Aborigines to make a type of bread known as damper. Did you know that goat's milk is actually healthier than cow's milk? We got phone calls and emails from uh, consumers who basically were allergic to cow's milk and couldn't uh, or hadn't had an alternative to milk or cream. They could make ice cream, milk in their coffee, apple pie with cream wasn't available to them because of their allergies. So suddenly when we were milking the sheep, we're making the, our yogurt, which is it's quite a thick product and often quite sweet naturally because of um, the way that the milk content is. And so we, we were able to offer the consumer an alternative to cow's milk. If you're lactose intolerant or have any other dairy allergies, chances are that goat cheese won't be a problem for you. This is what I love about this place. You can sense and you can see how happy all these goats are. The goats have access to shelter and they always have fresh straw to eat. Okay, let's go to the cheese factory now. The process of the cheese making is um, the, the, there's a holding vat on the um, out exterior part of the facility. Uh, the milk is pumped into um, the factory and the first process is pasteurisation. So it's called a high temperature short time pasteurisation. So in a single pass the milk is pasteurised. The milk from that point then goes into fermentation tanks and there's a uh, 12 to 24 hour process 
of fermentation where the, the live cheese cultures converts uh, the lactose in the milk to lactic acid and you get the formation of curds and whey. The next step is actually separating the curds and whey. What we really want is the solid part of the milk, which is the curds. So we take the curds and we mix in salt. Um, it's uh, kept at refrigerated temperatures. And once it's salted, it then gets formed into the cubes that actually go into the jar of cheese. It's manually put into the jar with herbs. There's some robotic dispensing of the marinade on top of the cheese and the, and the herbs and peppercorns. There's automation of the capping of the jar and the labelling of the jar. And from then it goes into a cool room where it's boxed. When we make our yogurt, the, the milk comes um, from the holding vat into a large tank, which is called a batch pasteurisation process tank. Um, the milk is heated uh, and then cooled, where we then add um, yogurt cultures, which are alive, living lactic bacteria. So when the milk is at the perfect temperature, these live, living lactic bacteria are able to divide. What we then do is take that cultured milk and we dispense that into yogurt tubs. And the, at this stage, the yogurt is a liquid format. Then we incubate the yogurt in the tubs for a process which can take up to 12 hours. And in that time, a level of lactic bacteria have developed in that yogurt tub and the yogurt changes from a liquid format to a solid format. Uh, a level of acidity is measured and when it reaches that level of acidity, which is that sourness you get in yogurt, it's then refrigerated and the whole process slows down. Once the product reaches the retail outlets, that yogurt still has live living viable bacteria, which are friendly bacteria, so when you eat the yogurt, that bacteria populates your intestines and it um, keeps your whole body and your gut bioma in a healthy state. What is your favourite dish using goat cheese? Um, I liked the I like the yogurt just with mango. I think it is an, just such a beautiful natural product. <laughs> But I also like the um, marinated goat's cheese on a smashed avocado for breakfast. Yeah, yeah. I really love standing in a supermarket and seeing our cheese in someone's trolley yeah. and actually see that, that someone grabs the cheese and scans it across the, the supermarket cash register. And I think, oh my God, someone's just bought a jar of our cheese. I thought, well, of course they do. We make thousands of them in a day. Someone's out there buying it, but I still get that Wow, that person is actually going to eat our cheese yeah, feeling. Because you so see it in You just see in someone's reality. taking that home. 
or I'd be in a local fruit and veg shop and I see someone grab it off the shelf and I sort of think, wow, that person's going to be eating our cheese. It makes me really quite poor, oh, you know, that someone's actually going to take that home and enjoy that product. So how beautiful was this farm? I hope this short documentary has brought you some insight into goat and sheep farming. That's what these videos are about, about making better buying decisions. And now, I'll see you in the next one.